the vlog, I'm cramping. Also, it's so funny because I haven't spoken like out loud for like the past like three hours because literally I spent the whole day like cleaning and so now I'm talking for the first time in like literally three hours and like my voice doesn't sound how my, the voice in my head <laughs> sounds. So I'm a little bit thrown off. Okay, here's the agenda. It is currently, what's the time? It's currently 8.41. I sound like a man in my head. Like in my head, I'm like, we have to do this and this and this. And then when I actually open my mouth, it's like, wow, I'm a little girl. I like forgot for a second. <laughs> okay, um, it's 8.40. So I wanted to vlog today. That was like on the list, whatever. I also wanted to get a snack and I wanted to kind of just chill out. I spent the whole day cleaning. I spent the whole day cleaning and then by the end of it I was so sweaty and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna hop in the shower. Um, thank you for turning on. Anyway, so I spent the whole day cleaning, okay? And then I was so uh, sweaty and like exhausted by the end of it and I was like, we just have to hop in the shower ourselves. Okay, I like cleaning. Isn't that really weird? Like, I don't know, people are like, I hate cleaning, like blah, blah. I enjoy cleaning more than anybody in the human existence because, I'll tell you why. First of all, it feels really good to like get things like clean and organized. I also have a little bit of OCD, so that might be why I like cleaning. I don't know why I'm oversharing in this vlog. Probably because I'm about to um, start bleeding. <laughs> every time I like, um, every time it's like my cycle or whatever, like I, um, I don't know, I just turn into a different person. I turn into a werewolf, thank you. Actually, it's not true. The thing about me is that I'm actually like a mess. Like the day is proceeding or not proceeding. The days proceeding, like the days before, no, not proceeding. The days leading up to my bleeding, what's the, what's the word for that? Proceeding. Yes, I said it correctly the first time. Oh my gosh, I need a drink. And I'm talking scotch, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want like tea or something. <laughs> um, but, okay, can my AC please turn on? Okay, whatever. So, I was like, I'm just gonna hop in the shower. I spent the whole day cleaning, you guys. You guys wanna know what I clean? Okay, fine, I'll tell you since you're asking. I essentially clean my whole room, and then I clean my other room, and I clean downstairs, I clean the kitchen, and then I clean my bathroom, and I like went in the tub, and I bleached everything. Um, and then I started like scrubbing the tub, and I like literally cloud nine. Cause also the days leading up to like before I get my period I said it okay thank you <laughs> is I'm really um I, I get depressed like really depressed like the days before I'm a naturally very happy person however I have been very like clinically depressed in the past before so every time like I ha I'm about to um, get my period or whatever I feel very depressed and then I'm like oh my gosh is it coming back like is my depression coming back you know and then I'm like, wait, no, it's just, I'm about to, you know, start, like, um, a new month, basically. Because I feel like every time you bleed, you, like, shed. Okay, this is, like, a spiritual thing. If you believe in it or not, I actually don't care. <laughs> um, but this is what I've realized and learned, is that every time you bleed, you release a lot of stuff. And so that's why, like, women can really, like hone into their intuition a lot if they wanted to. All women can really like become very psychic if they wanted to simply because we are naturally aligned with like the moon's phases and cycles and stuff and we also release a lot each month when you actually like intentionally release things because you're releasing a lot within you, right? So when you can use this as an intentional practice, you can release a lot of like past pain um, and you know, you can clear stuff, you can clear things within like your, your, your bloodline, no pun intended, <laughs> like within, like within your family and stuff like that. It does take like years, I, I mean, I don't know, it took, for me, I can tell you how long it took for me. It took me like two years to like clear a lot of stuff. So what are the three things that you can clear? You can clear like familial or like generational karma, number one. Number two, you can clear um, personal trauma, like childhood stuff, which everyone has. Thank you. I don't care how good of your childhood was. My childhood was amazing. And like I still had stuff that I had to release, right? And the third thing is the conditionings that we are brought up with, which again, we are shaped by our environments, right? So like whether you're a male or a female or in between or what have you 
you have the ability to hone in on things that may be bothering you and understand that there's a deeper source, there's a deeper rooted area that these things stem from that you can actually go within to heal. And um, you can do the inner work to go ahead and resolve these things so that they can be shed from you. You have to listen to how you feel and you, you should ideally really um, put that first, like prioritize how you feel. And this is not just for women, this is for men, this is for everybody, right? Like, it's really important that human beings understand that vibration makes up everything and that they have the ability to shift and to change their vibration, to uh, see different things around them um, that match that shift, right? So this is what like manifestation is, this is what law of attraction is, um, and everything is connected. And the um, pinnacle, I guess, of healing, like how you will know when you are close or you have reached healing, is you will have desires that are not really worldly anymore. You know, you'll have you'll have the need to experience love or the ability to give and receive love that is not worldly anymore, right? So you'll be obsessed or attracted uh, by um, things that are close to God, you know, close to source, close to that which makes up all things in existence. And so you'll seek that higher love. You'll seek that, it's called bhakti prema, right? So unconditional love that comes from God himself. So like we are so conditioned to be like this all the time, right? We are so conditioned to not believe in things that we don't see in front of our faces. But that's the exact issue. We're doing it backwards. If you wait for things in your life to change for you to be happy, you're never going to be happy because you make things in your life change or not depending on you, depending on how you feel, right? Depending on your trust in yourself, capital S, in self, right? God within, right? Um, you know, we forget that we are part and parcel of source consciousness. We forget that we have God within and outside of us, within and without us. We forget that all things are made up of God himself, right? So, I just went on a roll, baby. So, <laughs> So, in this way, um, we are so conditioned by the 3D world. And this is why in Sanskrit, in the Vedic Puranas and texts, we call this 3D material world illusory because unlike the eternal soul, which is of truth and not of illusion, the material world can be created and then destroyed. But the soul, the self, is timeless. It's never created, and so because it's never been created, it can never be destroyed, right? So with that being said, we should focus on the same consistency that we are made of. We should focus on that eternality that is actually everywhere, in and in between every atom, right? We shouldn't just focus on the money in our bank account or what someone said to us about us and about our self-perception or, or we should not focus too much on our egos or how we have been offended in the past or um, anything like that because the change happens inside. You see what I'm saying? And then your outer circumstances change after that. But they cannot change if you don't change. You cannot have the life you want unless you live that life already, um, sort of uh, vicariously through your imagination. We have prioritized the wrong thing. People do not prioritize their imagination whatsoever. They don't even tap into it, you know? Um, so, but it, it creates everything around us. It creates our entire lives. The weight that you have, and people don't want to hear this, really. They don't want to hear this. They don't want to understand this. They, they sometimes don't want to comprehend it because it hones down to one specific fact, and that is that you hold the control. You hold the power. And people don't want to hold the control or the power because that means responsibility, right? Because you cannot have power without responsibility. The two are synonymous. They're actually one and the same. They come in the same package. They're a package deal. So people don't want to take responsibility for their lives because it's easier to blame other people for it, for their lives. It's easier to blame how things have turned out uh, beforehand for the way their lives are playing out now. 
It's easy, but what they failed to realize is that the vibration they were holding at the time of those circumstances that were playing out are the reason why they have attracted this current, present manifestation of their experiences into their reality, right? Um, because another thing that you will soon come to realize, if you are keen on realizing it, is that past, present, and future blend. They're one. They become one. They're not separate like pages of a book, right? Because a book denotes a beginning and an end, and you do not have a beginning or an end, so how can you base your life around something that is beneath you? How can you base your experiences under something that is under you? You see what I'm saying? Do not think that time, do not be fooled by anything here in this material world. You are above it. You are able to control the facets of your body. And that alone should be enough of a... Read, read about Joe Dispenza. If, if you are curious, he's a man who was able to heal himself simply in the hospital room from a motorcycle injury. Using his mind. He was told he'll never be able to walk. He walked out of that hospital room, I think it was like 90 days later, walking, right? So there have been so many instances, but these people have gone through those things to tell the rest of the world about the truth that has been hidden from us for so long because of societal conditioning. So, you have the ability to influence everything around you. Proper, appropriate action should be taken along with those beliefs or else those beliefs would not be very solid, would they? They would not really be beliefs if you were not actually basing your actions around them as well, right? So, your belief system... Oh, I got so scared. Oh my god. <laughs> Please, that scared me so badly. Your belief system shapes your life. It creates your life. And you can choose, you can fine tune, you can attune your beliefs in any way you would like to. It's up to you. And the reason why this has been kept from the human race for so long is because in this way, with this being kept from us, this most important information that we hold the power, that we are source energy, with this information being kept from us, we are able to be controlled and swindled out of our most precious resource, which is our energy, which is the true form of all currency, right? So, so Seema, you, you mentioned a little bit ago that time does not exist the way that we think it exists. That's very true. If you have noticed when you fall asleep and you dream, a certain amount of time passes by, but you don't recollect how long has gone by. Even when you wake up, you are unaware of how much time has gone by. It's the same way, it's the same thing um, when we pass away from this world and when we shed our body. When we shed our body, we wake up to who we really are, we see the truth, but by then, um, you know, we can't really do anything with it on the material plane. It is actually a huge boon and a huge benediction and a huge blessing to be a human being because we have the ability to manipulate matter, right? And um, we can do this through prayer, which is like the most effective way. We can do this through mantra, repetition and recitation. You can even do this by cussing someone out, baby. Like, it all affects, depending on how you would like to procure your environment. Um, you know, you, you can affect it in different ways. Um, so, you control everything within your experience. Even your relationships mirror the relationship that you hold with yourself. And again, a lot of people don't want to take accountability for this, but they fail to realize that accountability is power. Responsibility is power then no one will have any power over you and no belief system, more importantly, will have any power over you because people who seek to have power over others, um, you know, do not have autonomy over themselves. Like, that's just obvious, right? So, you know, let's not even go there because um, if people knew this, if people knew the truth, they would not need to exercise the power over others. War would be a historical accident, right? Um, poverty would be 
the Great Depression, which spanned for a few centuries, is all it's going to be, right? Like, we, sh we should be thinking in that way, because we have a great deal to do here on Earth. We have a great ability to do many things here on Earth. And we squander this ability whenever we paint ourselves as a victim or think that we're not enough because of how we look that day or um, put our own uh, pain as our priority instead of the lessons that we could learn from that pain as being our priority, right? Because nothing is, nothing is a waste. Everything is a lesson, and lessons are only blessings, right? So any negative thing, guys, that you've ever gone through is never a waste. It has never been a waste of time or a waste of experience. It has been the greatest teacher that you'll ever have, right? That you'll ever get. So the faster we realize this, the faster we can wake up to our own power. And people with depression are told in uh, healthcare establishments and hospitals that they have a condition that they need to be taking medication for. And they're not told that, hey, your depression is a result of you repressing certain things. And this is a part of your journey and you need to be depressed for a while so you can actually go through it, hit rock bottom, and realize that your suffering can only teach you and if you were to be numb from this suffering, you would only be numb for the rest of however you decide to be numb for, and that's it. And you actually wouldn't learn what you need to learn from that experience. This is what people fail to know. And then they are dependent on something outside of themselves, which is, you know, that's, people may need medication at some point in time. I understand that completely. However, you must be willing to give yourself an end date, right? It's like the same thing for being sad. 11 days, you will cry. And then on the 12th day, or however long, you're going to be fine. And mark that in your calendar, write down what you're going to do that day, and then get up and do it. And I understand that it takes a certain amount of mental strength or ability to compartmentalize for people to be able to do this, but you cannot do anything really successfully unless and until you practice it and people don't want to practice because again it's uncomfortable so let me tell you that in life you will go through loss and you will go through suffering and you will be depressed and when that time comes understand maybe rewatch this video and understand that that also is happening for a season and that is also part of life and you are meant to learn something from the loss and from the pain and if you should go ahead and numb yourself through it, you would not be doing yourself a favor. And in fact, you would be doing yourself and those around you the greatest disservice possible. You don't need to show up as being strong for anybody. You need to be human. And you need to face your experiences with courage and wisdom that they will not last. And understanding that they're happening for you and not to you. So... Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope this was of some value or help to you. If it was, be sure to go ahead and leave me a comment down below. I love you very, very much, and I will talk to you in my next video. Peace.